Hello, sweet people. Okay, admittedly, that pun was fully intended as this episode of the NetSuite podcast discusses just that. Sweet people. It's Oracle NetSuite's human capital management software that securely weaves people data throughout the entire suite, giving businesses complete control over their HR processes. NetSuite Vice President of Strategy and Product Management Hanif Ismail comes on to discuss the biggest HCM challenges companies face today and how the Sweet People solution addresses those challenges. He also provides real life stories of companies that are utilizing the Sweet People solution and how it's impacted their business. Hanif concludes with the capabilities the NetSuite 2019 release 2 brings forth on the HCM side of things and concludes with what's to come in the future for sweet people. All of that coming up next. You're listening to the NetSuite podcast, where we discuss what's happening within NetSuite, why we're doing it, and where we're heading in the future. We'll dive into the details about the software and the people at NetSuite who are behind all the moving parts. We'll also feature customer growth stories, discussing the ups and downs of running a company and how one integrated system can help your business continue to scale. Before we get into this episode about sweet people, let's talk about something, well, sweet. Here's a word from our sponsors over at Hint. If you don't know about Hint yet, the brand is all about making the everyday more enjoyable. It started when Kara Golden, Hint's founder, needed a way to drink more water but wanted flavor without all those extra sugars and sweeteners that come in most drinks. So she created Hint Water. It has just a hint of flavor from real fruit essences without any of those added sugars or sweeteners. Everyone at the NetSuite office loves Hint Waters, but why don't you go try them out for yourself? Make sure you try the pineapple flavor. It's my favorite. Go to hint.co slash welcome to get 30% off your first purchase right now. Hi, Hanif. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of the NetSuite podcast. Thank you. It's great being here. So glad you're here. Um, Now, since 2018, you've taken on the role of the Vice President of Strategy and Product Management for NetSuite Human Capital Management, or HCM, as we'll refer to it on this podcast. For starters, can you quickly break down what that means exactly? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, sure. So what it essentially means is that I'm ultimately responsible for delivering a compelling NetSuite human capital management solution to the marketplace and driving its adoption as well from a customer-based perspective. I've also got oversight alignment responsibility for sweet people across the board. So everything from product management, engineering, all the way out to sales and professional services. So we optimize the customer experience across the entire value chain. Got it. So what does your day-to-day then kind of include to give our listeners just a little bit of insight on that? (laughs) So very busy like everybody else, I imagine. Yes. yes. We're driving our vision. We're defining our strategies as part of that. Uh, What features go into what release? So we're making a lot of investment-based decisions as well. I'm removing roadblocks for our teams to, in order for them to exec- execute efficiently, coordinating across NetSuite to evangelize sweet people's agendas, a lot of customer meetings, partner meetings on a regular basis, just to keep my ear to the ground. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, how do customers benefit from what you do? Yeah, I would say to start off, uh, you know, my, my team and I, as I alluded to earlier, spend significant amount of time listening to our customers about their aspirations, their opportunities, their challenges as well. so that we can align to their needs over time. In turn, very frankly, we work to respond to those opportunities and challenges, but we also anticipate customer needs in the future. Mm. Typically, you want us to think about that so that when the customer is ready to adopt, we're there ahead of time. So how would you anticipate customer needs? I mean, is it data driven? Is it, how do you do that? It's a couple of dimensions. One is understanding the kind of business problems that customer want to solve. Okay. Right. The other is just looking at market trends as well. Okay. Uh, And then there's also our dimension of our own strategy that comes into play as well. Got it. So you obviously couldn't get here without some type of a trajectory that led you to this point. How did your career history get you here and what impact do you think it's had on your role within Oracle NetSuite? Yeah, interesting question, I'd say. Um, <laughs> let's just say it's been a journey. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. As, as we've all been on journeys. Yeah, no kidding, right? <laughs> so I've started my career on the customer side way back when. 
where I was a practitioner. So um, heading up global HR systems for companies like Ford Motor Company, leading very large scale HR transformation projects on the customer side again. Then I transitioned to the software industry. I worked for companies like PeopleSoft, Oracle, SAP, Salesforce, you name it, and a few small companies. Um, in fact, this is my third trip back to Oracle. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> wow, you just keep coming back. I know. <laughs> <laughs> what's that What's that Mariah Carey song that like, if oh, you, um, you'll always be my baby? Yeah, yeah, even yeah. If, <laughs> even if you like, even if Oracle lets you go, you're gonna keep, you're coming, gonna back. keep coming back. <laughs> well, um, yeah, but I've spent about 20 years in the human capital management space. You know, I've done implementations, I've led product leadership organization, customer advisory, go-to-market functions. I think it's all of that experience that kind of brings me into this role where now I kind of oversee and coordinate across the end-to-end -end value chain for NetSuite Suite people. I think my background also brings into uh, a unique, let's say, empathy for customers oh, yeah. point of view, just because I've been in their shoes for a long yeah. time as well. I've seen it from the customer's eyes. I felt it from the customer's eyes. So I can bring that into play as we're defining and designing products as well, because I could look at it from that standpoint and say, hmm, is this real for a customer? Is this yeah. going to work for a customer? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. We talk to a lot of business leaders and founders yeah. who, and, and people who honestly analyze business and analyze strong leadership. And, yeah. and we hear a lot that word empathy, where you have to have, no matter what you're doing or right. what role you're in, you have to have empathy for your customers yeah. in order to make their lives easier, make their companies better and so on and so forth. So that's a, I think that's a really key point. Now with your career history and your current role, what are some of those HCM challenges you've seen and continue to see cro growing companies facing? Yeah, I think in our specific target market, if you will, for NetSuite, uh, some of the challenges that we tend to see are, I would say, probably growing pains for one. You know, a customer continues to grow, they increase their workforce, and then they realize, oh my gosh, I don't have the right human capital management infrastructure in place, mm. and I'm not scalable. I can't tell what's the make of my, of my workforce, who they are, what kind of jobs do they have, what am I paying them, you know, what is my single source of truth? I've got multiple sources right now. Mm -hmm. Which one should I rely on? Uh, so that's kind of, that's a big challenge that we hear about quite a bit, especially in our market market segment. The other is then as a company gets to a certain size, compliance laws become effective. Oh, yeah. So now they have to report on employment equity and so forth. And right. then they realize, wow, we don't have that reporting capability for that. There's others, I guess, lack of engaged workforce would be another one. You know, if you, the last study I looked at from Gallup actually showed that only 34% of the workforce is engaged. What that means is 66% of your workforce is not engaged. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. That's a huge loss of productivity wow. as well. Yeah, definitely. So that's another one. And then also integration challenges. This is a big one, which, you know, customers say, this application doesn't talk to this application and now I need to connect these together or I need to do redundant data entry or I need to output all of that information from multiple sources, use Excel spreadsheets to comp consolidate them and then analyze all of that. It's a lot. Uh, and that becomes a big, a huge challenge for customers. Yeah. I mean, when I came from the customer side of the house, one of the biggest costs of an implementation tends to be integration because it's not the initial creation of the uh, integration point, mm -hmm. it's the maintenance of that. And then when the vendors change the integration points, we then have to, then they have to invest again right. to update those integrations wow. as well. So it's an ongoing, continuous effort. Yeah, yeah. as you reach different levels Correct. of growth, that makes sense. Yeah. So, so then what does it take to overcome these challenges? So, you know, we all get stuck in our day-to-day -day issues and it really turns into a vicious circle. So as an example, you know, if you're looking to hire somebody to take off the burden from somebody else, as an example, um, we tend to go back into the same vicious circle, which is, I got to get this done. I got to get this done. I'll figure out about hiring this person later. And you never get to that and things just get worse and worse and worse. So you're kind of pushing the can down the line. So similarly, customers kind of need to look ahead and say, based on their business plans, what's the impact going to be to their human capital management strategy? Right. And then take action based on that, make commitments against that to addressing that those challenges from a long-term perspective, given that insight, if you will. So bringing this full circle yeah. here to, you know, our story here at NetSuite and your role, yeah. um, how does the NetSuite solution and in particular, Sweet People address right. these challenges and help 
help these companies take those actions you're you're talking about? Yeah. I'd say first of all, Sweet People is designed to provide customers the opportunity to centralize all of their workforce data into one single source of truth. That's the big one. Uh, we offer pre-integrated solutions across the board. So as an example, our global HR solution, which allows you to track your workforce, know who they are, what they do, kind of the things that I talked about before, what's their pay and so forth. It also supports compliance reporting, which is integrated into our US payroll, which complies with tax laws across 50 states. It's integrated to our time tracking, into our absence management application, our onboarding, our expense systems, and so forth, and the line, and the line goes on. Yeah. Uh, but it's all integrated together, in, which drives efficiency and provides a foundation for growth, if you will. We also have recognition tools. What that allows an employee to do is recognize another employee for a job really well done kind of yeah. thing. And that's affected cultures. In fact, one customer that I spoke to said, wow, they've changed their entire culture, their organization because of that tool. Wow. That's the kind of impact something like that has. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. Which American company started with a guy in a garage, was featured on Shark Tank, and now has over 1 million customers? Hint, they're reducing crime in neighborhoods everywhere. Here's Ring Video Doorbell founder Jamie Siminoff with his secret to success. It's true. In just a few years, we've had huge growth. We've hired hundreds of people, expanded our warehouse, and we're shipping millions of units a year, all while making sure our customers are happy. I've had lots of things to worry about, but I never worry about our finance and accounting because we use NetSuite from Oracle. From the beginning, NetSuite let me see what's going on with my business in real time, from revenues to expenses, customers and orders, even HR. I run my business from a dashboard right on my phone. NetSuite has been my business management system from 10 to a team of over 1,000, and NetSuite will be my choice as we continue to innovate and grow. Go to netsuite.com slash ring to see how Jamie scaled his business. You'll also get our free guide titled Overcoming Your Five Obstacles to Growth. That's netsuite.com slash ring for your free guide and the story of a great American company. netsuite.com slash ring. What are more of the actual benefits of a sweet solution, this single source of truth? Yeah, fair enough. Uh, there's a couple of dimensions to that. I'd say one is cost efficiency. You know, I talked about you having to build the uh, integrations, maintain those integrations, or pay some third party to uh, a license fee, if you will, uh, to build those integrations out and maintain it. So that's one. I, Smaller organizations, especially in the space that we're in, don't really have the skill set, the technical skill set to maintain these integrations, nor should they because that's not, not their core business. Right. Larger organizations can potentially afford to do something like that. So that becomes a benefit of, some, of a sweet solution. Again, it reduces the amount of integration efforts that they have to do. Process efficiency is the other example I would probably cite. And just to think about integration between payroll and finance as an mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. between to those two systems. So let's say you're a customer and you have a third party payroll system today, right? Mm -hmm. And you've built out these integrations either yourself or through a third party. And now you're typically every so often when you run your payroll, you're gonna have to run a batch process basically. And that batch process transfers data from your payroll system Right, to your financial system, to right. your NetSuite financial system. So they go through that process, but then you have kickouts and errors because, well, they're two different systems, two different requirements, two different data definitions and so forth. So you have to always maintain that. In the case of a true NetSuite oriented and sweet people solution, you don't have to do that anymore. So what ends up happening is there's no batch process to run. As soon as your payroll commits, it automatically hits our financials applications and that's it. Wow. So no redundant data entry, no rekeying of anything, uh, no reconciliation issues that all goes away. Less time spent on those issues, more time spent on what you're actually trying to do at your company. Exactly, exactly. Can you provide, you, you spoke to this a little bit with, you know, that example of how, you know, one of these companies with the recognition system, it really changed their, their company. Um, but can you provide some real life, life success stories of companies using yeah. Sweet People? Yeah, uh, Fisher Unitech would be a company as an example. They're a growing CAD uh, software company, 3D printing device provider. They're based out of Troy, Michigan. Michigan. They have about 200 employees. They've doubled in size. So again, growth trajectory for them. And they centralize their entire payroll 
Travel, Expense Reporting, Timesheets with NetSuite and Suite People. DSI is another company as an example. What they do is they extend into warehouse and customer inventory with software and professional services offerings. But they use Suite People to replace 13 legacy applications. Those disparate applications that I was talking about, that's huge. Wow, 13. That's huge. That's huge. And there are wow. many other examples like this. We have over 1,200 customers now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So in addition to all of the capabilities of Sweet People Payroll, which we kind of talked about the issues that can roll out there, Sweet People Payroll is now available as a sweet success solution. First of all, what is Sweet People Payroll? So Sweet People Payroll is a U.S. native, NetSuite native payroll solution. It essentially automates your end-to-end payroll processing, and it's a management solution, if you will, for payroll. Mm. So it calculates your paychecks. Think about everything go- that goes into your paychecks, right? right? Your earnings, your deductions, your taxes, all that kind of stuff, and it calculates all of that. It takes into account your federal, your state, your local jurisdiction taxes, all of that. At the end of the day, it then deposits that paycheck into your bank account, oh. right? So it does all of that. And then what we also do as part of this service, which we refer to as a full service payroll solution, is we'll manage your tax filings as a corporation as well. So whether it's your U.S. federal tax filings, your state, as well as your local jurisdictions. On your question about sweet success, actually both sweet people HR and payroll are now I call it Sweet Successified, available <laughs> in Sweet Success. But uh, payroll just recently got Sweet Successified, if you will. Wow. So how this benefits a customer, if you yeah. will, from that perspective, what does it do for them? Well, what we've leveraged is our 1,200 customers, and we've learned from our 1,200 customers, you know, what works, what doesn't work, where are you implementing, where are you customizing, and so forth, how do you configure, and so forth. We've taken that wealth of that knowledge, and we've pre-configured the application for certain types of customers. So out of the box, you have pre-configured, if you take payroll as an example, you have pre-configured earning types, deduction types, workflows, reports, and so forth. And ultimately what that means for the customer is reduced implementation time. Right, right. That's, I mean, that's huge. All, all, I mean, all of it, all of the capabilities are, are major you know, time savers that that we're essentially bringing forth. Yeah, absolutely. Anything else you want to speak to in terms of what, you know, Sweet People Payroll brings to the table and how it benefits customers? No, except for the integrations that we spoke about and then also integrations to time management applications from finance as an example. So I'm an hourly work, uh, worker. I put in my time within uh, Timesheets as an example, which is a mm-hmm. financial zone application within NetSuite. Yeah. Uh, you'll put your time in there. That'll flow into uh, payroll as well. Mm-hmm. And with Sweet Success... Does this system grow as a company grows, essentially? Yeah, a- absolutely. So let's just say a smaller organization, and as they continue to grow, there's different solutions for them and different things, different configurations as well that we would apply for so, those for those type of companies. And what's the importance of that? Like, what's the importance of starting with what you need as a high growth company and then working your way when you you know when you get bigger and bigger? The biggest importance of that is probably one from an implementation t- standpoint. We can get you to that goal faster, if you will, as you're growing and so forth. We can get you there much faster. You also don't have to use everything in day one, all of the capabilities and features of the solution in day one. You use what we've identified as a leading practice for day one, so to speak. And then as you continuously grow, you then adopt additional leading practices. And you don't have to reinvent the wheel because we've identified the common practices. With all of the customers, 1,200 customers so far. Yeah, exactly. Very exciting (laughs) stuff. Now, in a few of our recent podcasts, we've been talking about what's in the 2019 release too. Can you talk about what's new with Sweet People in this release? I guess there's a couple of themes that we'd probably talk about. One is we've got an increased support for warehouse distribution and manufacturing verticals. So we're starting to get very vertical focused as well, and we're starting to optimize for uh, industry verticals. Mm -hmm. In this particular release, we did hourly time off accrual calculations, which means you no longer have to manually calculate the accruals for an hourly workforce. We've also added in workbooks as well for time off analysis. So you can look at that data and quickly analyze the data and say, huh, you know, are we paying people? Are we accruing the right times of uh, right amounts of time off? Are there any abnormal patterns and so forth with respect to time off as an example? Mm-hmm. So we've done that. That just recently came out as well. And 
then we've invested in continuing to deepen our core HR functionality. We introduced a new employee timeline as an example, which is really cool. It's a visual representation of an employee's milestones from everything from hire to retire kind of wow. thing. Um, and, and it looks pretty cool. It'll take into account compensation changes, job changes, status changes as well. Yeah. So you've kind of got a journey of that employee and it's a visual representation of it. What do you think, like, what does that bring? Why did we create this? Yeah, what that brings is right now, and purely from a transactional perspective, if a, if a manager wants to know what's the what's the journey being for this employee today, they'd have to go to multiple places to be able to figure that out. Mm. And there's no nothing that connects everything together in most systems. Yeah. And in this case, you can now look at that journey and then have a great dialogue from a development standpoint with that employee and say, if this has been your journey, let's talk about your next steps as an example. Right. What's the best path for you going forward? You can use that at different points as well. When you're looking at it from a uh, compensation standpoint, well, when was the last increase this person had? What was the pattern of these increases this person had? So there's a lot lot of uses for something like that. Wow, very cool. So what's next? What's next for sweet people? My favorite question, actually. <laughs> I always love this question. <laughs> because there's never an end. There's, it's, never there's an always end. something it's next. So true. That is so true. <laughs> What we want to do is really take HR applications to a different level of value by really leveraging cross-suite data, data from across the suite to drive business performance. So what I mean by that is, you know, every vendor will talk about, yeah, we're integrated, we're integrated. We have an opportunity because we have a commonly shared data model from across the suite. So whether it's CRM, whether it's commerce, whether it's ERP, whether it's uh, suite people, we all work from this common shared data model. So as an example, one of the examples that I always cite right now, which is currently in development, is performance management. We want to do performance management very differently than what you typically see in the industry by leveraging data from across the suite. Yeah. So how many times, as an example, um, have you maintained your personal, uh, your goals, your performance goals? Once what? a year, maybe? I was going to say, maybe? I, I don't know if my <laughs> boss is going to get mad, but usually it's once a year, right? If right? we're lucky, right? Yeah. And, and that's typically the trend, right? Yeah. And that's a big challenge in creating engagement in the performance management aspect. Part of the challenge has always been is, how do I maintain my goals? I have to go in and update my goals on a regular basis and the progress that I'm making towards my goals. Right. So instead of that, we're going to maintain those goals for you. So what we're doing with the power of the suite is leveraging if you will, metrics from across the suite. Yeah. And then you can take these metrics as an employee and associate it to your goal, and we will maintain that on a continuous basis. So as an example, if you're a warehouse picker, mm -hmm. and a warehouse picker has potentially goals or gains how many picks you need to do. Well, ERP today tracks all of that, tracks yeah. what your number of picks have been. So what we can do is associate that to the goal and then be able to maintain that on an ongoing basis. So now the manager and the employee both have a viewpoint on how am I doing against this goal? You don't have to always maintain it, but it's also from an employee perspective, it's in front of you on an ongoing basis. So you know you know what, I'm 60% of that goal or I'm 80% of the goal, I'm working on it, right. I'm getting there. So it makes that performance management process much easier, if you will, to maintain. Yeah. And it takes that hindrance, if you will, away from it and increases engagement. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, it totally, no, it totally makes sense. And I can see from an employee standpoint how that would be, you know, that how that would engage me more, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, it, you know, oftentimes yeah. it's not that easy. Right. So, so to conclude here, where can our listeners find out more about Sweet People? A couple of ways. One is go to Sweet People page and netsuite.com. There's videos out there. There's in-depth demonstrations. There's data sheets out there as well. You can take a look at that. You can go to NetSuite YouTube channels as well, and you can look at customer video case studies that are out there. So that's really interesting. Or we highly encourage customers to or prospects to reach out to their account managers as well. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Hanif, for being with us, for sharing all there is to share about Sweet People. And we look forward to everything that's rolling out and continues to roll out in the future. Thank you so much.
If you want to get your HR infrastructure in place and add multiple levels of value, then make sure you click the link in the description of this bio. Thank you so much to Hanif for joining us on this episode of the NetSuite podcast. I also want to thank our sponsors over at Hint and Ring, as well as our editing crew over at Lampstand. And as always, all you listeners for tuning in. Don't forget, rate, review, and subscribe. Bye-bye. You just listened to the NetSuite podcast. Be sure to tune in every week with more NetSuite developments, stories, and insights into the benefits of one integrated system to help you run your business.